Hi guys, I'm Paul from Urban Constrictors. So last week I did a video on would you like to have a facility like this one? Because of the ton of positivity and the comments I get about my facility, I wanted to know if you guys uh, would like a facility like this of your own. And if you would, how would you make it? Some people said bigger, some people said considerably smaller, some people said I'd like two floors, etc. The world really was your oyster. Now, while I can't wave a magic wand and help you just magically create your dream uh, facility, I can certainly offer some help and advice uh, for steps to work towards it. The exact same steps that I have taken to get to here in my very own dream facility. So initially when I started out, the goal was to create certain combinations. When I started out in 2010 stroke 11, uh, pies for instance and clowns was very, very expensive. So quite a lot of people was buying hets. So because I was in a stable financial situation, I bought visual pies, visual albinos, visual clowns to make double hets and things like that. The goal back then was just to create albino pies and combinations like that. As the market started to fall, my goals kind of got a little bit more extravagant. Not only did I want to create these amazing combinations, but I also wanted the amazing facility with the amazing racking, in my opinion, uh, to, to push my hobby forward. And the best way I can say to do it is by, by approaching it from a business point of view. Business, who wants to fail at business? Nobody. Who wants to fail at hobbies? Nobody. So if you combine hobby into a business and push it really, really hard and forward, then I think you're setting yourself up for success rather than a defeat. So the best way, in my opinion, to approach this is by a business point of view with a goal in mind. One of my goals was to be able to create this facility but not have to spend my wages on it. Now I did put some of my wages towards it but I wanted my snakes to not only help pay for the racking which they did and have but I wanted them to also uh, help me fund the build of this facility. So one of the really big benefits to this approach is it doesn't affect your way of life so it, it requires a little bit less begging your partner uh, to be able to create this facility should you have the room. Now I'm going to have to just presume that everybody has the room, which you may not have, and I didn't. So we moved house with a humongous back garden, or huge in York terms, but we moved house so I could create this facility. So just for the sake of the video, let's just pretend that you've got the land and it's all about the finances and pushing your collection forwards. So first things first, whenever the word investment pops up, there's always a little bit of a dark cloud over it and almost negative sort of perception to the word investment. You've got to remember that the word investment covers a wide spectrum of things, invest in money, invest in time, invest in effort, invest in energy into something with a, worth, a worthwhile result. So when you hear someone talk about investing in this industry, don't just presume they mean they're investing some finances to also gain profit. Let's presume that they're just investing time, money and effort into this hobby. But while we're on the subject of money, let's talk a little bit more about that. So whoever it was that decided it was a bad thing to breed snakes for a profit, I think that them people are not only short-sighted, but they don't see the positives it can create if it's done correctly. We have to accept that money is the biggest motivator in life. It ranks above everything else. There's so many people that break the law to generate money. So if you can turn your hobby into a financially profitable business, that is only a good thing and not a bad thing. The reason this formula works, i.e. hobby and business, is because you can't force passion. And passion is a very, very huge motivator and a very powerful thing to possess moving forward in any hobby or business or both combined. So if you invest your all into your reptiles and your hobby and approaches from a business point of view, you're on the very first steps of creating a bright future in this hobby stroke business and taking the first steps in walking towards creating your very own facility like this one. So because you follow this channel, I'm going to presume that you already have your snakes. So you've already incorporated some level of investment. So now if you invest your time and energy and efforts 
into giving them a very, very good way of life and also marketing yourself on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or even YouTube, you're taking even further steps to move forward to creating a facility like this one. So if you think it's as simple as breeding two high-end snakes together, creating offspring, and the money comes flooded in, unfortunately, you are wrong. It's gonna take even more investment from you, the investment in, in uh, social media, investment into getting your photography skills good, and really just building a profile, an online presence for yourself. But that's the beauty about it. I'm telling you to put your efforts into yourself and into your hobby, not a mundane job that you hate, to work towards creating a better way of life for you, your snakes, and taking even further steps to create a facility like this one. So when we talk about marketing, you need to market yourself professionally and in a very positive light. Sell your offspring on their credits and not by discrediting people on other people's creations. Only use a positive approach because that not only strengthens the hobby, but it also casts you in very, very good light. I learned very early on in business that sell yourself on your credits and not by the discredits of other people. So what are some of the steps you need to take to make this hobby work for you? Because you follow this channel, like I said before, I'm going to presume you already have your uh, collection or the start of your collection. So now it's time to invest more than just that money. It's time for you to fully invest yourself to move forwards. Only buy into the projects you are interested in. Be positive about the industry because if you're not positive, then you shouldn't really be in it. If you can be positive about the industry, be positive about your collection and provide your collection with everything they need, you're creating great foundations to move forwards. Put a huge amount of effort into your photographs. Put a huge amount of effort into uh, Facebook and if you have a YouTube channel, YouTube. Because what you put in, you will get back out. When you finally create that amazing combo that so many people want, don't quickly sell it for short-term profits, sacrificing long-term goals and gains because holding them killer animals back pays a brighter future for you moving forward in this business stroke hobby. Build a collection that you are proud of. If you're proud of it, you want to show it off just like I do on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. I've created some amazing snakes in my time and I'm all, almost uh, rushing to bring them to the forefront and to show them off because I'm incredibly proud of them. If you are proud of your creations, everything else comes naturally with a little bit of effort from you. But most of all, enjoy it. The ride is as fun as a reward. And if you do it all off your own back, off your own credits, and if you're off your own investment, it's hugely satisfying. So when you hear investment, don't just presume someone's investing money to get money out. Think about their investment on not only money, but time, effort, energy, onto all the points I've already made, and wish them well, rather than wanna hinder them. This industry is by far the most exciting, most accepting, most rewarding industry I've ever been a part of. I love this industry with all my heart, and this is why I've turned this into my nine to five, and I'm pushing the industry in forwards in a positive manner. If you are as passionate and as loving as this industry as I am, instead of just dreaming about a facility, instead of just thinking about the facility, write it down. Set yourself a goal. It's scientifically proven that if you write something down with a pen and paper, you are more likely to achieve it. So after you watch this video, think about the uh, position you wanna be in in several years time. Like I said, I started in late 2010 or early 2011, so this has taken many years. But after you watch this video, write down a goal and in a couple of years time, be sure to let me know you've achieved it. So now I'm gonna take you on a very, very short tour of this relatively small facility. I'm gonna show you that this facility is far from finished, but I look forward to showing you the facility fully finished, fully stocked, and just paving my future in this amazing industry. Right guys, I'm not gonna film the lobby area just because it still needs finishing off, just like this room does. But I'm just gonna show you, give you a little tour of urban and tell you about some of my plans. So you may notice these, these are just Ikea uh, display sort of kitchen units. 
I've got a really old incubator that is simply here to hold that up. I've got my sinks going, uh, just some tubs uh, that I use for quarantine, but I need to set up my quarantine room next door and just some mess under there. So we have a beautiful little BIAC type green tree python in here. It's in hunting mode. You can see the tail is moving back and forwards, which is cool. So I know that that snake wants to be fed. So little BIAC, and then we've got Another Biak type. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it's got a little bit of stub shed. That's the problem, we're not using Reptichip. But one thing about this, I need to just put a little section so the Reptichip do not fall out when I open the door. So the next one, it's made a bit of a mess of his enclosure. One of my favorite, favorite snakes are green tree pythons. And then lastly, the one that had that stuck shed when I bought him or her, I'm just gonna have to move some of that. Him or her uh, is now shed and looking absolutely fantastic. Loads and loads of blue. Looks like he's got stuck shed on that part of its neck, but it hasn't. It's just very iridescent. Just an amazing, amazing green tree python. Really, really pretty. So that's going to be kind of hopefully the foundations of breeding a real blue line green tree python. So lots and lots of blue in it. So we've got my display case there that I'm probably going to part with very, very soon. And then we've currently got 90 V70 racks, obviously when these ones are here, which they are on their way. So I've got 90 V70s. But more recently, I've decided I want to hold a few more. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. I decided I want to hold a few more snakes. So the plan is to uh, remove my photo section. I'm going to push that rack over there because the distance from the corner of the wall to the edge of the door is that distance because I planned it carefully. So that rack will be there. That space there is exactly the same as that space because I always knew I'd get another V70 rack. So I'll have the 30, 20, 20, 20, another 20, and then the 30 grow up females. This section, this whole back wall will be females only. So after a snake, uh, a baby snake moves out of the V18s, if it's a female, it will move to that rack. If it's a male, then it's gonna remove to the same rack, but on this side. What I've decided to do is I'm gonna have a V35 rack in this corner for males alone. I'm going to do hatchlings, uh, so the V35 there, hatchlings down here, the sink and a small cupboard there for the pull-out hosepipe, etc. for all the water bowls, and then the rest of the hatchlings. Obviously, uh, Reptichip uh, is distributed across the whole collection. And then the very, very best bit about uh, this whole room is my incubator. But before I talk about that, uh, just the lighting, the lighting, uh, sorry, the photo section, it's relatively cheap photo section, uh, good quality lights, but they're not very expensive. Two flashes that bounce off the uh, soft boxes onto, um, onto the subject, giving a tremendous amount of light. And then I use my uh, Canon, you can see my Canon 7D, this is the Mark II version it's currently got a 16 35 millimeter ultrasonic lens so i only buy canon lenses and then what that does if you don't know is it tells these to fire off when it's time so this sends uh, an infrared signal to these two so when i press the shutter release uh, these lights obviously flash these flashes flash with the overhead lights casting down this is just a cheap uh, piece of paper it costs about two pounds uh, that's just the backdrop. That's the chair I do my two minute Tuesdays on. That's the only reason it's in here. If I ever stop doing the two minute Tuesdays, the chair will probably go. Now the walking incubator, this incubator is able to be scaled upwards. So what I did when I created it and designed it is I designed it so, and sorry about the, the noise and the draft. Um, in fact, I'll just, So because we've got no eggs in here, I've turned the fans off so 
we were not hearing so much noise for the very first time. So I've got a bit of Repto chip I was doing a few tests on. So I've got it in here drying out, that'll be you shortly. The um the oilfill radiator supplies the heat to this room. I keep my spray bottle for my uh ball pythons and my spray bottle for my green tree pythons in here so when I spray my snakes they're not getting sprayed with cold water. So when I designed this incubator, I designed it to hold one of these racks across this section, obviously the same across this section. And then from there to there is exactly the same size as one of these. So if I ever grow this room to ha to be able to, uh, so if I ever grow my collection and I need more racking, I can put a third rack in and it won't, uh, stop me from using the corners because obviously the racking is open so I can put clutches all along here and then obviously on there but the way I also designed the racking there's babies in there so I'll just be careful is so every shelf can hold two high and three across I'll let I'll make sure there's a gap in between all the tubs when obviously there's more than uh, three or four in here uh, just so the air can be distributed round evenly and grid racking so there's no uh, solid spots where hot air rises and just kind of gets stuck. So this room is very light and very uh, airy. It has lots of um, lots of airflow to distribute the heat perfectly. So the thermostat, like I say, is built into the wall on both sides. And yes, I still need to finish that off. And it comes through the wall and the probe is there. And the second probe is there. This is a backup thermostat. Uh, fan overhead, exhaust fan should uh, this room ever overheat and then the whole facility is equipped with these generation 4 LED lights that are state of the art, super low energy and they admit zero heat, they do not even get lukewarm so it's all tiled but now this is my last clutch of 2019 once this is out I'm going to do all the finer details in the corners I'm going to paint this uh, timber I'm going to put the skirt in or the trim in. I'm going to scrub it because there's still a bit of a residue in parts from the uh, grout and stuff for the tiles. Because if you watched me build this, I tiled it all myself. Did a pretty good job. So I've never done tiling before, but it's very, very simple. So it's. Uh, I'm also going to finish these sections off. So walking incubator, there's, when it's closed, there is plenty of room. You can move about. You know, it's fantastic. It, it really is uh, one of my most um, most favourite things about my facility. Now, when we put the when I did the windows, uh, uh, Ben Ogden uh, contacted me and said I'd be thought of doing triple glazing. I said I am doing triple glazing just to uh, maximise uh, or minimise heat loss. And he said, Oh well, I know a glazing guy, so thank you, Ben, for. Um, Provided me with these very narrow windows. So people have asked, why did I go for narrow windows? That's because if I left one open, which I very well, which I don't do, uh, you can't get through them. I've tried to get through one of these. There's no chance. They are super, super thin, and it lets less light in and less chance of obviously someone one day climbing through them. So a lot of careful considerations gone into this facility. Oak doors, oak doors with uh, obviously windows. I went for the same doors, but one with glass, one without. I didn't want to be able to see in the lobby, but I wanted to be able to see into the incubator. Uh, really nice brushed, not brushed silver, uh, dark chrome fittings with USB ports. Yes, my kettle is purple. That's because I bought it a long, long time ago. I was being a cheap ass and I bought it from Tesco's. It was the cheapest one because it's ugly. And I never thought it'd go on, ever on YouTube. My little bar system, I need to invest in a better one, but it's pretty loud anyway. And this is my facility, nice uh, nice flooring. It, I absolutely love this room. So if my talk earlier can uh, help you uh, take the steps to get this facility, I hope it's uh, helpful. So a lot of people have asked me many times when I'm doing these videos on helping, why, why do you wanna help people? And it's simply because life is too short not to wish each other well. But also, if you have an amazing facility like this, you might let me come round. Uh, that will be fantastic. 
When I visited Neighbours Constrictors, Neighbours Constrictors, because we was obviously going to the Houghton show together, I loved being in his facility. It's a fantastic facility and lots of cool and interesting things going on. And I love uh, seeing other people's facilities. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting Neil's, Neil Martin's facility yesterday, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And it's just nice to spend some time with a fellow hobbyist in their facility or my facility. If we all have fantastic facilities, it grows the industry stronger and better for everyone in it. And it just paves a brighter future for all. And that's what I'm about. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it two thumbs down. And I'll talk to you on Two Minute Tuesday. Cheers.